Hello all and welcome to this week's series of realism tips. This week we'll be exploring different fishing methods that are more natural to what you may expect a real animal to do in Path of Titans. Our first tip comes from Fallon who says it's thought that Spinosaurus had super sensitive snout tips for detecting settled movements in water. So when I play Suka or Spino, I like to just sometimes stand in a body of water with the tip of my snout submerged, occasionally biting to act like I'm snapping at a fish. This is a great tip. Whenever you see the sheer size of an animal like a Spinosaurus, it would have had to consume a lot of food in order to survive. It would have also required a lot of energy to move, especially with its large sail. A dinosaur that stands still for the most part to catch its prey, much like a heron would, would have a lot more success on fishing effectively. Having a highly sensitive snout that could detect disturbances in the water would help. You can mimic this in your downtime, especially during times when your dinosaur would otherwise have little energy to fish. You'll know when your sound's in the water by the rippling effect that comes with it. The next tip is besides sipping your sound to the water, you can accommodate other ambushing techniques. You can obviously do the same without the snout bit, but you can also lurk by rocks and other obstacles for the perfect chance that prey is one directly by. Why spend time and energy chasing down prey when it comes to you directly? The next tip comes from Ned Carnifel. When playing a semi-aquatic, I'd like to use precise movement to put my tail slightly out of the water before diving down to the deep water. Like this, you can act like you do a strong tail push into the water. This is a great point, especially for animals that are large and would require a lot more energy or force to propel downwards. I tend to let the full animation diving below the surface play out myself, as that also helps to give your dinosaur going, going underwater some extra oomph. Explore some other areas whenever you do go underwater, too, besides just where fish will actually spawn and swim in the game. Fish would realistically stick in droves around foliage that they could eat, or in a shelter of rocks and logs. Try to make it a habit of investigating these places, especially as a Spinosaur that has a thin enough snout to really explore some of those nooks and crannies where the fish may be choosing to hide or try to shelter. Another tip for hunting semi-aquatics would be to try ambushing prey from the other side of the waves for a better chance of actually catching it. After all, if your prey can't see you coming, you'll have a much better chance at getting close enough to catch it, especially if you're actually quick enough to get it. This tip would be better suited for sarcos, as sucos and spinos likely would not have had as much traction on land comparatively and would not have hunted much of any land animals, especially due to relatively weak draw muscles. Yeah, maybe sick to fish for these guys. Of course, not all animals idly wait for fish to come to them. Smaller, nimbler dinosaurs may have operated in more of a pursuit style of hunting for catching fish by first chasing them. Juveniles especially would be prone to doing this, as they usually have more energy, more of a curious nature, and less of a robust build compared to their adult, co adult counterparts. Try to make it a game. Great, you've caught your fish. Now what? Well, eat it, of course. There are a few different ways you can do this in Path of Titans. First, consider the size of your fish compared to that of your dinosaur. Something that big likely wouldn't go down such a narrow, snouted dinosaur sort so easily. The smaller fare like this trout, however, is a lot more fitting for my suko's proportions. Look at its size compared to my snout and throat. Something like this I could feasibly swallow whole after I've caught it. Instead of swallowing such a big catch hole, though, you can always try descaling it and breaking it into smaller chunks, and then eat directly from the fish or take meat chunks off of it. Also, eating fish could be a bit messy if you're not swallowing it whole, so it's okay if you picky with where you're trying to eat it at. Some nice warm rocks or an open space may be better than some slick and cool mud. Sarcosuchus, which may share a crocodile's eating tendencies and size, would be more likely to swallow very large chunks of fish and meat in one go as compared to the spino or suco. That's it for this week's rendition of Realism Tips. Thanks as always for watching. I got a request for some tips on hunting behavior, so I'll be exploring different hunting strategies in Beast of the next week, and Path to Titans may follow. Stay tuned for that.